Uh, Madison Lowe, clause number 38982. Mr. Rojas. His, I guess Matuska no and his client. Mr. Matuska, I'm signing the dismissals on uh, Ms. Bonham. If she's here, she's free to go. Never been so glad to bust a panel. Um, no, that was needed to happen for sure. I did math as I was leaving. I was like, okay, good. How do you know? There's no way. All right, good morning. Are you Madison Wade Low? And Mr. Rojas, will your client waive the formal reading of the motion? He will, Your Honor. Mr. Lowe, I have a <clears throat> motion to revoke your community supervision. Shows that you were placed on probation May 9th of 2023 for the state jail felony offense of theft. And that was a two year sentence that was probated for three years. Is that correct? And it alleges that you violated your probation. That one alleges that you failed to report is directed to the probation department um, May 19th of 2023. And is that true or not true? Count two alleges that you failed to work faithfully at suitable employment and provide verification of that. And is that true or not true? I'm sorry. True. Count three alleges that you failed to provide verification of performing the community service hours as required. Is that true or not true? And then finally, count four alleges that you're behind in your court assessed fees as of September 18th, 2023, in the amount of $980. And is that true or not true? Sorry. Are you, uh, did you enter your pleas of true to counts one, two, three, and four freely and voluntarily? Speak up, please. Yes, and did you plead true because they're all actually true? Yes, I have here on the computers and documents that have your signature on them that the state has marked as exhibit number one. Before you signed these, did you go over them with Mr. Rojas? And do you fully understand them? And do you understand if I follow the agreement that you've made with the district attorney that you'll be waiving or giving up any right to appeal? And my understanding of your agreement is that you guys have reached a, uh, an agreement for a 15 month cap in the state jail prison. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. State tenders number one. No objection. It's admitted. Is there any evidence that Mr. Lowe is not competent? No, Your Honor. All right, sir, I'm going to find that you entered your pleas of true to counts one through four freely and voluntarily. <clears throat> find those counts true. Find sufficient evidence to revoke your probation, but I'm going to reset your case so that the probation department can do an updated report. That'll give me more information about what's been going on on probation. If there's anything that you think is important for me to know, make sure to get that information to Mr. Rojas and he will present it to me on your behalf when we come back for sentencing. All right, you can go back with the bailiff. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Yes, sir. Today's the 14th, right? Um, Mr. Burbank on Derek Eglin or Eglin. Derek. Derek. He's on the other side. Okay. We'll get to him in just a, as soon as we can. Um, what about Alton LaPointe? LaPointe. Mr. Burbanks calls numbers 23 DCCR 0050. 
The oldest one's 41404. All right, good morning. Are you Elton LaPointe? Yes, ma'am. And Mr. LaPointe is uh, charged with aggravated sexual assault of a child in two cases and indecency <laughs> with the child in the third. And Mr. Burbank, what is the announcement? Uh, I'm, we're asking for a little bit more time. Um, State and I have been talking. There have been some new developments uh, since the last time. State asked him. Talk to the family. Uh, we are going in the right direction to try to resolve this. Matter. All right. It, it may end up on the trial docket, but it also might end up with resolution. So. Okay. Well, let's do one more reset, and um, obviously, uh, by that point, it'll be you know, a year since indictment, so it'll be time to do something one way or the other at that next court date. So we'll just do a regular announcement, and we'll uh, get an announcement at the next. Okay. All right, thank you. You can go back with the bailiff. The pit last one. Uh, what about Adele Villaforte Mora? Do I have him on the side? Thank you. Clause numbers 23 DCCR 0052, 0053, 0054, and 0055. Good morning, Mr. Coleman. Me? Yeah. They passed it, didn't they? No. Or no? No. I think that's good, actually. Which ones? That you, the judges, the extending the age of district judges. I don't know. My personal opinion is different than some. So I'm not planning on being here, whether that law is in effect or not. I can assure you all. <laughs> Uh, wait a minute. No. 30 more years. If I, 30 more years. Yeah. No. I will not be here 20 more years. No. I love all of y'all, but no. It did. It didn't matter to me either way, uh, as far as personally. Okay. Well, as soon as we can get, I guess, Mr. Burbank's two over here, we can take care of those pre trial. That won't take long. Um, let's see. Do we have a uh, Bryce Caesar? Good morning, Judge. How are you? I'm good. Good morning, sir. You're Bryce Caesar. And let's see. One of these, this was a re indict, correct? No. New charge. Oh, it's a new charge. It's not a re-indictment. It's, okay. it's from the same date. It's, it's the separate thing. Sorry. Oh, it said it, and then I marked through it because we already had that conversation. Okay, that's okay. All right. Um. So. Mr. Caesar's cases are set. Um, for trial to begin with jury selection on Monday, the 23rd, 7th, I'm sorry. We've got injury to a child in cause number 39369, and then an aggravated assault causing serious bodily injury in cause number 23, DCCR 0219. <laughs> um, Mr. Well, I guess let me... Obviously, some of this will depend in one of the cases on the motion to quash that you filed. Yes, ma'am. But that's only in the new case, yes, correct? That's correct. We're ready, subject to some pretrial motions. Okay. Um, there's a there's a motion in limine that we need to deal with with regard to uh, if the state intends to uh, independent business, Mr. Caesar's statement. 
Okay. So we'll, in those, the, the limiting, obviously we can handle just before trial, I would think, but the motion to quash, um, I had a note on here that I asked for a response to that. Did you get yes, that? Yes, on uh, Thursday last week, I believe. You filed a response? Uh, 23 DCCR 0219. Can I get my file? Yes, sir. I know that it's not as big as that. You can probably find your stuff. Okay. 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 I guess I'm looking also what the difference there. There are two different offenses that are alleged. Injury to a child. And so. The new indictment doesn't allege that it was a child, but it's the same person? It's the same person. But it, it comes down to the way we end up having to prove our case. The new indictment allows for us to prove um, the same injuries by recklessly causing them. It's just an aggravated assault. The indecent or the uh, injury to a child is a result oriented offense. The ag assault is conduct oriented offense. And it's just. And as far as trial goes, which one would you? We would consolidate. You would uh, consolidate. Okay. I don't have a problem. With it. Okay. So, with regard to the defendant's motion to quash the indictment in twenty-three DCCR zero two one nine, um, alleging that it's not specific enough with regard to the manner and means of. Um, that were used uh, it talks about a hard object or service or surface as far as the judge that could be anything this as lesniak i mean obviously i've read uh, your motion and understand your position mr radford yes ma'am miss so lesniak I'm going through your response, but if you want to go ahead and fill me in on what your response is. It's, it's that it is sufficient, essentially. But, um, there's case law that supports that it's sufficient, that um, just because the state can't specifically identify the object or surface that caused injury, it's got sufficient notice. I disagree. I yeah, I know that. Okay, I did already do some uh, looking into it also, um, even without having read the states. I, at this time, I am going to um, deny the motion to quash uh, that the defendant filed. And I don't see an order. Um, if someone can get me an order, uh, e-filed. Denying that, that would be great. I'll get that signed. So with that being said and done, what uh, is the announcement then? We're ready, I guess, pursuant to whatever the motion and limiting thinks we need to take a free trial. But yes. I have okay. a motion and limiting regarding extraneous offenses and then statements by the police officers and if they intend to introduce these statements. Okay. And we can address that as well. Yeah, so let's do that. I, I don't think any of that would change anyone's and I can get being ready Mr. Radford ahead of time to see if there's anything that we can agree on so that we can have redacted stuff prepared prepared it necessary. okay that would be are great you, are you intending to introduce this statement yes all right so y'all can I'll I will let's do this y'all get together I, I mean obviously we don't know the number yet I'll number the case yes, after I'm docket today once you know that if y'all will get together anything you can agree on 
that would be great. And um, if it is going to be one of the top ones, what we can do is, since we're not in trial this week, um, if it looks like it's number one, we can go ahead um, and take care of, have Mr. Caesar brought back over this week, take care of any pretrial we need to, so that that Monday we can go straight into it. So we'll, um, I'll get with y'all this afternoon on that. Yes, ma'am. Okay. I'll get with you. Um, it looks like three that are on here ready to close the house. Okay. You can, if they're ready, put them up here and then I'll, I'll figure them out as they go that way. I, okay. Let's see. We have Christopher Collins on this side. Still on the other side. Okay. Everybody's over here now. All right. Do you need to visit? Yes. Okay. Your Honor, if they want to clear that out, their Estrada should be already dismissed. Uh, Christopher Estrada. Can go back up, sign the dismissal. I need to and let's get Derek Eaglin. Uh, Mr. Eaglin, Mr. Burbank, clause numbers 23 DCCR 0162 and 0163. Good morning, sir. You're Derek Eaglin. Yes, and Mr. Eaglin's cases are set for trial to begin with jury selection on the 27th. And what is the announcement? I think I can be ready, but I have, uh, after jury selection, I went upstairs and I had new uh, medical documentation on my desk that I have not yet tendered to Mr. Burbank. And I know I have two written statements that are probably pretty fresh that I'm not sure that he has yet. Okay. Um, I'll number it, and then uh, since there's we're almost two weeks out, week and a half out or, or more, if you'll get that, um, Mr. Burbank, today, if that changes your announcement, just let me know. Otherwise, I'll number it, and you can get that. And um, it's not one of the older ones, but we'll see how everything else falls. Yeah, he's anxious to get this over. Sure, I'm sure he is. So we'll get um, get with Miss Lesniak after docket get whatever information she has. I want to make sure we're still all also on the same page. Mr. Eaglin, you were previously um, here and rejected an offer if you wanted to enter a plea to a lesser offense of aggravated sexual assault of a child, um, which for a 30 year term in the institutional division that would, uh, you would be eligible for parole on um, in each of your cases to run concurrently or at the same time. Um, we already talked about the fact that at, in cause number 0162, if you're found guilty, the minimum punishment is 25 years up to 99 years of life without any parole, you understand. And you still want to reject that and move forward with trial. Okay. I want to make sure you understand that after today, there won't be any plea agreements accepted. If you change your mind, you would be entering a plea just to me and it would be to the entire punishment range. You understand that? Okay. All right. Y'all let me know if anything changes. Um, and I'll number it after docket. Uh, let's get Adele Mora. Clause numbers 23 DCCR 0052, 53, 54, and 55. Good morning. Are you Adele Villafuerte Mora? And Mr. Moore's cases are set for trial to begin with jury selection Monday, the 27th. Mr. Burbank and Mr. Uh, as Coleman. Knows, I was appointed from another attorney, and uh, I am ready to go. Okay. Uh, and Thank he's you. anxious also. You know, he the bill for the last time. And um, so I am ready to go. Thank you, Mr. Burbank. Mr. Coleman. Stay ready, Judge. Okay, so I will number the cases. It looks like the rejection that we had before uh, was for a 25 year sentence. Um, concurrently in the cases, and you still want to reject that and move forward with trial, correct? Yeah. Okay, we'll number the trials today after docket. Okay. 
Yeah, so as soon as I'm done with DACA today, I'll number, um, you get your orders, um, trial order, probably after lunch today. Thanks. Yes, sir. And as far as which case, what's, um, is there a- I have the same occurrence. Uh, I believe I filed a motion to consolidate. Okay, can you check? Do you know, Mr. Burbank? They are at the same occurrence. Yes, I mean, as far as a motion to consolidate, do you have any objection to that? Probably not. I mean, I didn't file anything, Judge. Um, I mean, if they're all out of the same occurrence. They're all the same. Uh, it was one. It was a chase. Okay. So, um, if would you double check that that is on file oh, yes. uh, for me, and then yeah, uh, I e filed it on November the fifth. Okay. So, if there's no objection, that will be going forward on all four cases. All right. Perfect. Thank you. Yes, sir. Ms. Perrazzo, are you ready on uh, Christopher Collins, clause numbers 23 DCCR 0118 and 41324. Good morning. Oh, okay. Good morning. Um, are you Christopher Collins? Yes, ma'am. And Ms. Barraza, what is the announcement? Uh, Your Honor, at this time, um, we would like for Mr. Collins' case to be placed on the trial docket. We did receive an offer. All right, you need to do a plea bargain rejection oh, okay. in writing. Well, yeah. Yeah. I don't see one in, in either case. Okay. Uh, Mr. Collins, if you'll just have a seat um, in the jury box, I'll recall your case in just a minute once that's done. Let's see. Do we have a uh, Mr. Rojas? Are you ready on Chad Holmes? Uh, oh, okay. I'll wait. Are they getting on? Okay. All right. And Miss Holmes is still back there with Miss Cepeda. Okay. I'll look at her a minute. Are all these Britneys? Okay. Let's get uh, Veronica Sanders. Clause numbers 23 DCCR 1005 and 1114. Mr. Rojas. Okay, so there's no paperwork. There's no paperwork. <coughs> I'm sorry. Okay. Get there. Um, <laughs> let's see. You can put that one right back. I guess back up here. Charlie's. I wasn't done with it. I just they don't have her yet. Right. <laughs> It's fine. It's fine. Everything's fine. Okay. 
Okay. Well, you know, I'm going to get in the uh, thumbprint stuff. Well, you know, Chad Holmes, any of y'all, Chad Holmes, come on, come up, cause number 23, DCCR 1762. All right, are you Chad Holmes? Yes, ma'am. And Mr. Rojas, will your client waive the formal reading of the indictment? Yes, Mr. Holmes, you're charged with the third degree felony offense of indecency with a child by exposure from December 1st of 2019. And how do you plead to that charge? Guilty. Are you pleading guilty freely and voluntarily? Yes, ma'am. And because you did what they charged you with. I have um, here on the computer some documents that have your signature on them that the state has marked as exhibit number one. Before you signed these, did you go over them with Mr. Rojas? Yes, no. Do you fully understand them? Yes, no. And do you understand if I follow the agreement that you've made with the district attorney that you will be waiving or giving up any right to appeal? And my understanding of your agreement is that you've uh, agreed to a 10 year deferred adjudicated probation. Yes, there would be a $1,000 fine and you'll be required to follow all of the rules and conditions of probation. Yes, um, do you also understand if you're not a U.S. citizen that a plea of guilty or no contest may result in your deportation, exclusion from admission to the country, or yes, denial of naturalization under federal law? Yes, ma'am. Also, I have received, and you've gone over with Mr. Rojas, you understand that based on the nature of this plea agreement, uh, that you will have to register as a sex offender, correct? State tenders number one. No, sir. It's admitted. Is there any evidence that Mr. Holmes is not competent? Oh, yeah. All right, sir, I'm going to find that you entered your plea of guilty freely and voluntarily. Find that you're mentally competent and you understand the nature and the consequences of your plea. Find sufficient evidence to find you guilty, but I'm going to reset your case so that the probation department can do a pre-sentence report. That'll give me more information about you and your case, and then we will come back at a later date for sentencing. Ms. Zelezniak, what is the state's position with regard to bond reduction based on the nature of that plea agreement? I think that would be all right as long as there's no contact with Right. So what I'm going to do, Mr. Holmes, based on the nature of your plea agreement, is reduce your bond to one thousand um, dollars. A condition of that bond is that you have absolutely no contact or communication with the victim. Do you understand? Um, that's in person, obviously, but it's also through social media, Snapchat, DMs, any of that kind of stuff. Do you understand? Um, and so if you make that bond, uh, there's a couple of things that are very important. The first, obviously you follow the rules, but the second is that the first thing you do when you're released from jail is go to the probation department so they can start that pre-sentence report for me. If you don't do that, then when you come back, you run the risk of me not accepting the plea agreement. Things could be much worse. Do you understand? Also, if you make that bond and you are arrested for anything before you come back for that court date, then obviously you run the risk of me not accepting the plea agreement. Do you understand? All right. We'll see you back at sentencing. Thank you. So do you have Veronica Sanders now? Veronica Sanders. Cause numbers 23 DCCR 1005 and 1114. Good 
Good morning, ma'am. Are you Veronica Sanders? And uh, before we start, I'm going to take judicial notice of the court's file. Um, it includes an evaluation for competency that Dr. Propon prepared uh, for us, dated uh, September 17th of 2023. The finding in that report was that Ms. Sanders is currently competent to stand trial. Is there any other evidence with regard to competency, Mr. Rojas? No, no, Mr. No. Nichols. All right, then at this time, I am going to find that Ms. Sanders is competent to stand trial. And <laughs> Mr. Rojas, what is the announcement? Judge, I speak with Ms. Sanders, uh, and she has decided to in the pleas of not guilty in these cases and set them for trial. However, uh, she did not want to sign the tab. Yeah. Okay. So, Ms. Sanders, in cause number 23, DCCR 1005, you're charged with the second degree felony offense of burglary of a habitation. From July 19th of 2023. And what that means is if you go to trial and you're found guilty, the range of punishment would be between two years and up to 20 years in prison. Do you understand? And then in cause number 23, DCCR 1114. You're charged with the second degree felony offense of assault on a peace officer from July 18th of 2023. That indictment alleges that you were previously convicted of assault on a public servant, March 24th of 2021. And what that means in that case, and probably in the other, if the state gives notice of that uh, correctly, is that you would be looking at a first degree felony punishment instead of a second degree. Uh, because of that prior offense, which means the minimum punishment would be five years up to 99 years or life. Do you understand that? Do you have a question? Yes, ma'am. Like I said, it was, that's, that's why I'm taking, I'm going to let Eric excuse me. That's why I'm taking the trial because um, I had seen the video, I had seen the video yesterday, and then the video don't, it don't show where I beat the police officer. So that's All right. My so here's the thing. So hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. So just, I want, You've talked to Mr. Rojas. I don't want to get into the actual evidence. Are you talking about the case today on the record? But let me just explain, and I'm sure Mr. Rojas has explained this. What will happen in a trial is the police officer himself or herself will come and testify. Whether something, and then if there's a video, they'll show that video. And then if you say you didn't do it, then it'll be up to the jury to decide if they believe that police officer and what they see on the video. But so we're not going to get into the facts. So, you, so you're saying about my pride, my, I've been already convicted of that pride and did my time on it. So why would my pride affect what I got from the school? Because that's what the law is in the state of Texas. If you continue to break the law, then your punishment you're gets worse. Guilty. Yeah, if you're found guilty mm -hmm. and you have a felony conviction, then your punishment gets worse every time. So in this case, it goes from a second degree felony to a first degree felony. It bumps it up one. Do you understand that? So if you're found guilty in either of these cases, because you have that prior offense, the punishment is actually five years minimum up to the rest of your life in prison. Do you understand that? And not the two to 20. You understand? Answer yes or no, please. Okay, and so do you want, and what was the offer that was made? It was to plead to the assault on a public servant for five years and dismiss the burglary. So, Mr. Rojas has gone over with you that the states made an offer if you wanted to enter a plea of guilty for a five-year term in prison on the assault on a peace officer with a dismissal on the burglary of a habitation. Um, you have every right to reject that and let a jury decide on both of these. I just want to make sure you understand what the possible consequences could be if you go to trial and what your options are right now if you wanted to enter a plea. And do you understand all of that? And do you want to reject that and have your case go to a jury, both cases? You want to take that five years? All right, I'm going to hold the case while you now you're going to have to go over that paperwork and sign it on the tablet with Mr. Rojas, right? Okay. Is 
say Marcus. Okay. 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 Uh, Dustin Harrington, Mr. Parker. Cause numbers twenty three DCCR zero six six seven. Three five nine six zero and four zero six two one. Well, you're going to discuss the bridge, and I won't doubt there's something messed up in the paperwork. We had to do it three times. Okay. All right, so are you Dustin Harrington? Yes, ma'am. And will your client waive the formal reading of the mo of the uh, indictment in each case? He will, Judge. Mr. Harrington, in cause number 23, DCCR 0667, you're charged with the state jail felony offense of uh, theft with two or more previous convictions from December 9th of 2022. The indictment alleges you were previously convicted of theft June 20th of 2011 and then November 13th of 2014, two cases on August 26th of 2015, two cases on July 12th of 2016, and then another November 7th of 2017. The indictment then further alleges that you were convicted of burglary of a building, a state jail felony, August 1st of 2011. And then after that was final, you were convicted of credit card abuse, a state jail felony, November 10th of 2014, and also possession of a controlled substance, a state jail felony on that same date. How do you plead to that charge? Guilty. And are those prior offenses true? Yes, ma'am. Right, so that makes it a third for punishment, correct? Yes, ma'am. Um, are you entering your plea of guilty and true, freely and voluntarily? Yes, ma'am. And are you pleading guilty because you actually did what they charged you with? Yes, ma'am. Now, in clause number, in clause number 40621, you're charged with a third degree felony offense of driving while intoxicated from October 13th of 2020. That indictment alleges you were previously convicted of driving while intoxicated September 25th of 2008, and then again March 1st of 2011. And are we going on just yes. count one? Yes. And how do you plea uh, to count one in that indictment, guilty or not guilty? Guilty. And are those prior DWI offenses true? Yes, ma'am. Do you enter your plea of guilty in this case freely and voluntarily? Yes, ma'am. And because you actually did what they charged you with? Yes, in each of these cases, I have here on the computer some documents that have your signature on them that the state has marked as exhibit number one. Before you signed these, did you go over them with Mr. Parker? Yes, ma'am. And do you fully understand them? Yes, ma'am. And do you understand if I follow the agreements that you've made with the district attorney that you will be waiving or giving up any right to appeal? Yes, ma'am. And do you also understand if you're not a U.S. citizen that a plea of guilty or no contest may result in your deportation, exclusion from admission to the country, or denial of naturalization under federal law? Yes, State tenors number one in each case. No objection. It's admitted in each case. Is there any evidence that Mr. Harrington is not competent? No, no. All right, sir, in each of your cases, I'm going to find that you entered your pleas of guilty and true freely and voluntarily. Uh, find that you're mentally competent and you understand the nature and the consequences of your pleas. In cause number 23, DCCR 0667, find sufficient evidence to find you guilty and at this time find you guilty of theft. Find those prior offenses true. Sentence you in accordance with your agreement to a term of six years in the Institutional Division of the Texas Department of Corrections. You will receive credit on that sentence for any time that you've been in custody that the law gives you the right to receive. Clause number 40621 also finds sufficient evidence to find you guilty and at this time find you guilty of driving while intoxicated. Sentence you in accordance with your agreement to a term of six years in the Institutional Division of the Texas Department of Corrections. You will also receive credit on that sentence for any time that you've been in custody that the law gives you the right to receive. These cases will run concurrently, which means together at the same time. 
I'm going to sign a dismissal in clause number 35960 as part of that plea agreement. Um, I've handed you the trial court certifications in each of your cases that show that these were agreements that I followed, and so you have waived your right to appeal. You have also been handed a written admonishment regarding your ineligibility to possess a firearm or ammunition. Because of the judgments entered against you, you're ineligible under Texas law to possess a firearm or ammunition. Possession of a firearm or ammunition could lead to charges against you. Firearm is a legal term, and you should read that written admonishment I provide you to see what devices qualify as a firearm. If you have questions about the laws that make you ineligible to possess a firearm or ammunition or about how long that lasts, you can talk to Mr. Parker. All right, good luck to you, sir. You can go back to the bailiff. Let's see, Patrick Clay, Mr. Parker. This is clause number 23, DCCR 1080 and Patrick Clay. Good morning, sir. You're Patrick Clay. And I'm going to take judicial notice of Mr. Clay's file. Mr. Clay was evaluated by Dr. Grappon for competency to stand trial, received that report dated October 19th of 2023. The finding in that report is that Mr. Clay is currently competent to stand trial. Is there any other evidence with regard to competency? No, Your Honor. No, Judge. All right. Then at this time, based on that report, I am going to find that Mr. Clay is competent to stand trial. Mr. Parker, what is the announcement? Your Honor, we just need a little more time so I can discuss the, with him the, the offer and uh, take make the counter offer to the prosecutor. So what will happen, Mr. Clay, Mr. Parker is going to come out and talk to you about what the options are on your case. And you need to talk to him, listen to him. And then when we come back, we'll just uh, you can have some kind of agreement, hopefully, on what can happen. OK. All right. You can go back with the bailiff. Uh, Let's see, Christopher Collins. <laughs> this is cause numbers 41324 and 23 DCCR0118. All right, so again, you're Christopher Collins. And Mr. Collins, in cause number 23 DCCR 0118, you're charged with the third degree felony offense of driving while intoxicated. From February 26th of 2021, that indictment alleges you were previously convicted of driving while intoxicated October 15th of 2003, and then again October 29th of 2015. It further alleges that you were convicted of burglary of a habitation, second degree felony, February 2nd of 2004. What that means in that case is if you go to trial and you're found guilty, the range of punishment would be that of a second degree felony, uh, which is a minimum of two years up to 20 years in prison. Do you understand? Yes, ma'am. And I have made that notation that, to, that I admonished him to the correct um, um, term on that case. Okay. Um, in cause number 41324, you're charged with a first degree felony offense of murder from November 17th of 2022. That indictment alleges that same prior offense of the burglary of a habitation from February 2nd of 2004. In that case, what that means is that if you are convicted and that prior offense is true, you would be considered enhanced punishment, which is a minimum of 15 years up to 99 years or life. Do you understand that? Yes, I've also made that modification on the plea bargain rejection that I've admonished him to the proper range of punishment. 
I have uh, before me two uh, plea bargain rejections that you've signed with Ms. Perrazzo that shows that the district attorney's office has made offers if you wanted to enter pleas of guilty in your cases. It looks like the offer in the murder case is for you to uh, plead to a reduced offense of a manslaughter, a second degree felony offense with a 20 year term in prison that would run concurrently with a 10 year sentence in uh, the driving while intoxicated case. You have every right to reject those offers and have both of your cases set for trial. I just wanna make sure you understand what the possible consequences are and what your options are. And do you understand all of that? Yes, ma'am. And do you wanna reject those offers and have yes, your cases set for trial? Yes, all right, then we'll get it set on the trial docket. Ms. Perrazzo will begin uh, preparation. Yes, Mr. Your Honor, if I may, the state would elect to go first on the DWI. We'd also be seeking to file a motion to stack any punishments that uh, come from their, their uh, or, that come or result. And that was also explained to Mr. Collins as well before he rejected the offers in each case. Okay. All right. Thank you. You can go back with the bailiff. Just remind me when it gets closer because I won't make a notation necessarily of that. Just when, when it actually is going, that that's the one that we're both first on. Yes, Thank you, Mr. Coleman. Let's see, do we have Tiffany English, Mr. Um, Lewis, cause numbers 30705 and 31722. They're not up there. morning it's three three oh seven oh five and three one seven two two wow okay. Good morning. Are you Tiffany English? No. And it looks like I have motions to revoke unadjudicated probations in each of these cases. Mr. Lewis, what is the announcement? Judge, at this time, my client is ready to enter a plea of not true. Okay, Ms. English. Enter a plea of true so we get up a baby PSI. Would you please raise your right hand the best you can? The other one. Do you swear or affirm the testimony you're going to give in this hearing will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? So help you God. Yes, ma'am. All right, thank you. You can put your hand down. Will your client waive the formal reading of the motion in each case? She does. Miss English, in cause number 30705, I have a motion to revoke your unadjudicated probation. It shows that you were placed on probation June 10th of 2019 for assault on a peace officer, and that was a seven year deferred probation. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. And then in clause number 31722, I have also a motion to revoke your unadjudicated probation. Shows you were placed on probation that same day, June 10th of 2019, for possession of a controlled substance. And that was a five-year deferred probation. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. Each of these cases allege that you have violated your probation. Count one alleges that you committed the new offense of a public intoxication. August 2nd of 2023. And is that true or not true? Yes, ma'am. True or not true? true? Count two alleges that you failed to never become intoxicated or in, under the influence of any intoxicating sub, substance in that on you on um, August 2nd, 2023, you were less arrested for public intoxication. It's kind of the same thing. Is that true or not true? Yes, ma'am. True. Okay. Count three in each case alleges that you failed to provide verification of completing a job search as required. Is that true or not true? Oh, true. And then count four in each case alleges that you are behind in your court assessed fees. And is that true or not true? True. Did you enter your pleas of true to counts one through four freely and voluntarily? Yes, ma'am. And because those counts are actually true. Yes, ma'am. All right, then I'm going to find that you entered your pleas of true to counts one through four freely and voluntarily. Find those counts true. Find sufficient evidence in each case to find you guilty and revoke your probations. But I'm going to reset your cases so that the probation department can do an updated pre-sentence report. 
That'll give me more information about you, your cases, and what's been going on on probation. If there's anything that you think is important for me to know, make sure and get that information to Mr. Lewis, and he will present it to me on your behalf when we come back. All right. Thank you. You can go back with the bailiff. I agree. Um, let's see. What about Tommy Lee, Mr. Lewis? Cause number 32350. Okay. We've got paperwork coming on. That's all right. It's... Um, I'll go ahead and do it. Do you need a, a it's MTRP. Step in front of the clerk real quick, please. Tommy Lee. Sorry, I Good morning, are you Tommy Charles Lee? And Mr. Lewis, will your client waive the formal reading of the motion? You will. Mr. Lee, in cause number 32350, I have a first amended motion to revoke your community supervision. Shows that you were placed on probation January 21st of 2020 for the offense of lottery fraud, and that was a 10 year term in prison that was suspended for 10 years. Is that correct? It alleges that you violated your probation. Um, there's 13 of them yeah, and there's was, an agreement. Yeah, is there something y'all can uh, agree to? Which one is to, to abandon? Uh, I think it's a new, a new law, law violation. I think we want to go forward on that one. And maybe uh, the unsuccessful completion or, or not reporting that you completed the death task. Uh, so is, is the intention to play true to that Galveston County case? Yes, sir. That's sufficient for me. If, okay, that's, if you're fine we, with that, Mr. Coleman. We would abandon the remaining allegations. Thank you, Mr. Coleman. State's going to abandon one through nine and then 11, 12, and 13. Mr. Lee, in cause, I mean, in count number 10, um, it alleges that you committed the new offense of burglary of a habitation July 24th of 2021 in Galveston County, Texas. And is that true or not true? Did you enter your plea to true of true to count one freely and voluntarily? Yes, and because that one is actually true. Yes, I have here on the computer some documents that have your signature on them that the state has marked as exhibit number one. Before you signed these, did you go over them with Mr. Lewis? Yes, ma'am. Do you fully understand them? Yes, ma'am. And do you understand if I follow the agreement that you've made with the district attorney that you will be waiving or giving up any right to appeal? Yes, ma'am. State tenders number one. No objection to it. It's admitted. Any evidence Mr. Lee is not competent? No objection. All right, Mr. Lee, I'm going to find um, that you entered your plea of true to count 10 freely and voluntarily. Uh, find that count true. Find sufficient evidence at this time to revoke your probation. I'm going to revoke your probation and reassess your punishment in accordance with your agreement to a term of two years in the Institutional Division of the Texas Department of Corrections. You will receive credit on that sentence for any time that you've been in custody on this case that the law gives you the right to receive. I'm going to hand you the trial court certifications in just a second. Excuse me. Oh, here's another one. Maybe not. Um, the trial courts, there's another one coming. <laughs> Maybe not. Okay, I'm going to hand you the trial court certification that shows this was an agreement that I followed, and so you waived your right to appeal. Um, I'm not sure if back when you were initially placed on probation uh, that you were given this, but um, I don't remember exactly when we started doing it. I'm handing you a written admonishment regarding your ineligibility to possess a firearm or ammunition. Uh, because of that felony conviction, you are in ineligible under Texas law to possess a firearm or ammunition. Possession of a firearm or ammunition could lead to charges against you. You should read that written admonishment to see what devices qualify as a firearm. 
you have questions about the laws that make you ineligible to possess a firearm or ammunition or about how long it lasts, you can talk to Mr. Lewis. All right. Good luck to you, sir. I still feel like I have another one. <clears throat> what about Miss Rodriguez? Okay, that's a sentencing. Clause number 27256 on Christina Rodriguez, Mr. Lewis. Christina Rodriguez. I think we may have a question that we won't understand. Uh, since the last sitting, uh, myself and the prosecutor have been talking, and I think she's under the agreement to extend her with a minimum, adding the condition of no contact to the complaint that that's on the misdemeanor cases. So she never entered pleas of true. We never went through that first submitted motion. It was filed after right. we got the please on the so yeah so we we were here it looks like she entered pleas of true in the first amended second motion <laughs> okay <laughs> we'll get it straight let's see all right so you are christina rodriguez yes. and so miss rodriguez was previously in court on september 12th Entered pleas of true to counts three through six in a second motion to revoke unadjudicated probation. Reset it for an updated pre-sentence report. After that time, the state filed a first amended second motion to revoke unadjudicated probation with some additional allegations in that one. And so it looked like uh, I've gotten a copy, of, <clears throat> a copy of the updated report and it looks like it was unagreed. My, and you guys have said that there's possibly an agreement now. We had agreed at, uh, at, at the original time for a cap okay. of three years. Okay. And then Ms. Rodriguez came to court and um, it seems like she wanted to pursue probation. So I'm okay with that. And I would abandon one, two, and seven as long as we can amend her conditions to make there be no contact with Ms. Correa. So what is the status of the misdemeanor? Uh, I think it's pending down in county court, or both of them are pending down in, in county court. And I've tried to pitch Mr. Gray, and he's not available for today. So I was just going to. That seems to be like a kind of turbulent relationship. Um, pursuing charges against her. Okay. So she's already on a 10 year deferred. Okay, then if that's the agreement, then what we'll do, I don't see any reason then to go through and get any other pleas on the first amended just to go forward. No, and I'll abandon one, two, and seven for the record. Okay. So, hold on, Ms. Correa. Okay, so Ms. Rodriguez, um, I want to make sure you understand the opportunity that you're being given today and what this is going to mean with regard to any future relationship with Mr. Correa. There will be none. Do you understand? You, none. It doesn't matter if he says it's okay, come back. It doesn't matter. No one can give you permission to be anywhere around near speaking to, sending messages to, communicating in any way with Mr. Correa other than me. Do you understand? So I'm going to find that you previously entered your pleas of true to counts three, four, five, and six freely and voluntarily. Find those counts true, find sufficient evidence to find you guilty and revoke your probation, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to uh, give you this opportunity. It sounds like the state's willing to give you this opportunity. This is your last opportunity, okay? I can assure you that if you are back in here, 
I will not be having any type of com conversation about continuing you on probation. Um, you're on probation for obviously a serious offense. If you violate your probation again, you could be going to prison for up to 20 years. It's just that simple. Um, I will see uh, the more and more that gets written on the front of these files, the worse it is. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to continue you on probation. I'm going to modify the conditions of your probation. Just like I said, to say, have that you have absolutely no contact, no communication in any way with Lewis Correa. Um, if you do all of this and you get back doing what you're supposed to do, then this is still a deferred probation. You still have an excellent opportunity. Um, you have to be the one at this point to take advantage of that opportunity. It's not up to anyone else. Um, so I hope you do that. I'm handing you a trial court certification that shows this was an agreement. I followed the agreement. You've waived any right to appeal. Um, when you are released, you need to contact probation as soon as you're released. Okay? Yes, ma'am. What if this happens that? Well, then you would contact them tomorrow morning. I was just asking you that. Okay. Thank you. You can go back with the bailiff. Yes, ma'am. You too. Dynasty White, Mr. Uh, Lewis, cause numbers Y'all give me just a second. I'm going to these letters. Real quick. Have you had an opportunity to review those letters also, Ms. Martino? All right, um, you are Dynasty White, and Ms. White was previously in court, entered pleas of true to counts one, two, and four in a motion to revoke unadjudicated probation. I've received an updated pre-sentence report as well as some letters um, on her behalf. I've reviewed all of that. Has everyone had an opportunity to review those things? Yeah. Are there any additions or corrections to that pre-sentence report? No, from the All right, Mr. Lewis, you may proceed. Jordan, I think the biggest issue with Ms. White was her not having uh, support, uh, adequate support, you know, from her with a family or close friends that could help her with the situation. A lot of times probation is hard enough just trying to get through it yourself, but then once you have a child that's <laughs> ill, it becomes even, even harder. I think that's one of the biggest issues that Ms. White was dealing with, was that trying to accommodate the, the care for her child at the same time complying with probation, which, you know, that's what caused a lot of the issues with the not reporting and things of that nature. I think the child has spent a significant amount of time in the hospital outside of Jefferson County, I believe in Louisiana at one point for a long period of time which caused a lot of those issues, which she constantly reported to the probation. She did let them know about what's going on with the child. Even in February, a travel uh, clearance was given to her in February so she could travel with her child. A couple of months later, she was there. The administrative clearance happened a couple of months later, I think in May. And even after that, of course, it still was hard for her trying to make that travel, you know, five, six hours away, going through this without support. The one good thing that has happened since she's been in custody is that you see from the letters that people have stepped up to be able to be there for and help her get through this to where if she's allowed to continue on supervision, I think she'll be able to uh, comply, keep up with the conditions of probation as well as be there for a child. I think now that she does have that stable environment, unfortunately it took her for her being in custody for this to happen. But now that she has this, I think she has a, a has definitely got her more focused on being able to to complete complete her responsibilities. So we're asking that 
the court considered uh, to uh, detain or also believe. Ms. Malfino. Judge, obviously the concern of the state is the fact that the administrative hearing and the update PSI both reflect the issues with her attitude in respect to the probation department trying to bend over backwards to assist her in all of those uh, different things that she's dealing with. I certainly appreciate the fact that she doesn't have a felony criminal history and this would be two felony convictions. So I'll wait to defer to whatever you think is appropriate, Judge, but I think it's very good. she needs to so miss white you're in court today you're being cordial you have the appropriate facial expressions when mr lewis is talking about you and what you want to do but that's not the picture i'm getting and that's not how you act apparently when you're in front of probation so that's a big problem you don't get to act one way to your probation officer and then come in here and go, I want to be a mom and I want to be with my kids and I'm so great and I've got all these things and then go in there and be disrespectful to the people who are trying to help you. You understand that? Mm -hmm. They are not there for you to be disrespectful to, ugly to. I mean, they're just trying to do their job and their job is actually to try to help you, which is looks like what they tried to do. They got you the travel permit. They've rescheduled your, your appointments. They, they are trying to help you. And you're going to treat them that way. And they come in and want me to be nice to you when you're not doing that to them. So if I give you this opportunity today, you have to understand that you don't get to just come into court and act respectful. You have to re act respectful in every part of your life. In your job, you got to get a job to your probation officer. Otherwise, you're going to go to prison for up to 20 years. 20 years. I could send you to prison right now. Right? How long has, how long have you been in custody on this MTRP? 90 days. How old are you? 23 years old. Two kids looking at going to prison for 20 years. Now, when you first got this case, I would be saying, you know what? You're young. If you, you know, was talking to you about, you're still young, but you're not a baby anymore. It is time for you to grow up so that you can be a parent. And sometimes that's hard and it's making decisions that, are different than the decisions you've made previously in your life, right? Okay, so I'm going to give you an opportunity today, but I want you to understand that you will not be given this opportunity in front of me again. I want you to take advantage of it. I want you to be there to take care of your children. I really do want that. I want you to be successful. You don't have a felony conviction. You can still do all kinds of things with your life, all kinds of things, whatever you want, because you don't have a felony conviction. Right. And that's what we all want. I want you to succeed. I really do. Um, so I'm going to find that you entered your pleas of true to counts one, two and four freely and voluntarily. Find those counts true. Find sufficient evidence to revoke your probation and find you guilty. But I'm not going to do that. I'm going to allow that 90 days sitting in jail uh, to serve as a sanction. Hopefully it really was kind of an eye opening experience. Uh, you don't want to be there. You don't want to be in prison. So take take heart of that. Don't forget what it felt like. OK, don't get out and in six months or a year, forget what it feels like right now. Remember what it feels like. And then if you're thinking about doing something you shouldn't or not showing up or not, think about how it feels. OK, and make those better decisions. Um, so what will happen? The first thing when you're released, you'll need to go get with your probation officer, figure out. I understand you have a child that is, has some special needs and has been sick, but you can't help them for sure if you're in prison. So you have all these people are saying they're going to help you. Hopefully they really will, because you're going to have to come for your appointments, regardless of what's going on in your life. Um, it's this has to be a priority sometimes even over that. OK, even if it's just for a day, probation has to take priority over your child. Otherwise, it'll prison will take priority. And that's not what we want. Does that make sense? OK, all right. You can go back with the bailiff. Good luck. Thank you. 
Mr. Lewis, you have uh, Larry Williams, cause numbers 23 DCCR 1363 and 23 DCCR 0285. I'm just going to, I think it's. Okay. All right, are you Larry Williams? And so let's see, Mr. Williams entered a plea of guilty in cause number 23 DCCR 1363. The agreement is for a dismissal in the other case. I've received a copy of the pre sentence report. Has everyone had an opportunity to review that report? Yeah, I have not. Any additions or corrections? No, I have just a few uh, additions for the court, if I may. It's, it's come to my attention, Judge, and hopefully you can do something about it. But ISF will not allow for both tracks to be ordered. Anymore. I have that notation here as well. Um, it was just brought to my attention a couple weeks ago saying that they would only accept one track or another. My uh, position was to have Mr. Williams go to both tracks in. Is that so? I heard that and then I never really confirmed it. I had a note for myself to ask if that was. I think just one, they can only do one at the time. My, my thought kind of outside of the box, especially with respect to this defendant judge, and I can give you a little bit of procedural history, uh, is that if that's the case, he needs to go to ISF cognitive and then be ordered to safety. The agreement to dismiss the uh, family violence case was based upon a lengthy conversation with the complainant, her wish to non-prosecute because she has his two little infant twins. And so I understand the position that she's in. She's young and she doesn't understand what's causing all these problems. And one of the things is his substance abuse and his attitude problem that he's had since he was a juvenile. I know sometimes PSIs don't reflect a lot of juvenile history. I went and checked his juvenile history and it includes arson. It includes assaulting his mother. It includes all kinds of disruptive behavior in his neighborhood. I've also had a lengthy conversation with a very well-respected member of the community who is uh, an older gentleman who is his neighbor and has tried to help Mr. Williams and his brother along the way since they were very young to no avail. He, it's my understanding he causes all kinds of disruption in the neighborhood. My hope was that in taking responsibility for this case, he would be granted probation with those conditions up front so that his mind gets on the right track because based on his history, he's going to be in here on a first degree felony within the next two years if he doesn't straighten his act. So that's that's just what I wanted to add. Well, well Judge, actually, I'm speaking with my client this morning, he wanted me to ask if the court would consider holding the ISF condition at abeyance. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. So, and here's the thing, Mr. Williams, your attorney and, and Ms. Malfino can both tell you um, a lot of times with young offenders, and I consider you still young at 23, you're not as young as some, but you're still young. Um, and the fact that you have such extensive juvenile issues and problems that I see in the pre-sentence report, and it sounds like there's probably even more things out there that haven't been uh, put in this report. I almost always uh, require ISF up front, not as a punishment, but as a tool so that you can then be successful. Okay, it's the opportunity that you're being given just to be on probation with a deferred probation without a conviction on your record is a huge opportunity. No one wants you to throw that opportunity away because you don't have the tools in your pocket to go out and be successful and quit doing what you're doing, right? If you, you can't keep doing the same thing and expect a different result. Um, and so for me to try to give you those tools, um, I agree with Ms. Malfino um, that you need um, obviously substance abuse treatment and you also need, in my opinion, uh, that cognitive track of ISF, which is a plan. It's a program to help you make better decisions, not end up where you are. 
And so if I follow this agreement, that is what I'm going to do. The only alternative, if I don't follow the agreement and you refuse to go do those things is for you to go to prison. I don't think that's what you want, right? Okay. So then at this time, um, in clause number 23, DCCR 1363, I'm going to find that you entered your plea of guilty freely and voluntarily. Find um, sufficient evidence to find you guilty, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to defer all proceedings. Was there an agreement on how long that probation was for? No. So I'm going to require, I'm going to order that you um, are on probation for 10 years. You can talk to Mr. Lewis. I sign motions every single day to let people off probation early, but they have to have done everything correctly. Right. So if you get out there, you do everything right. You successfully complete these programs. It doesn't mean you have to be on probation for 10 years. But if you're not doing everything like you're supposed to and you're having some trouble getting through probation, then we're going to keep an eye on you for this long. OK, so you'll you're ordered to, uh, again, 10 years deferred probation. I am going to order that you uh, enter and successfully complete the safety program. And then after you complete that, I'm going to order that you enter and successfully complete the ISF cognitive track. Then you will be released on probation and be required to follow all of the rules and conditions of probation, whatever those are. If you do all of that, this is your opportunity to change your life. Quit acting like you've been acting since you were, what, probably 12 or 13 years old and um, get through life without a felony conviction. And if you successfully complete the probation at the end, the case is actually dismissed. You will never have a felony conviction on your record. The other side of that, though, is that if you violate any condition of probation, you're going to be back in here looking at a sentence in prison up to 10 years. Do so you understand? I'm handing you the trial court certification that shows this was an agreement that I followed. And so you've waived any right to appeal. Um, good luck to you, sir. I hope you take advantage of all of this. Thank you. And then I'll sign the dismissal if I haven't already as part of that agreement in clause number 23, DCCR 0285. So, um, did you already let them know? So, Mr. Macon apparently is ill. Um, Brian Casimir, Ray Jones, and Kenneth Sylvie can all be brought back. I'm going, we're trying to get an announcement, Ms. Lesniak. Okay, uh, on Kenneth Sylvie, I'm going to, uh, we're, we're waiting to get an announcement from Mr. Macon. If y'all just let her know when she steps back in, I need to, but we'll reset the other two for sure. Ma'am, no, I'm not going to order a fine. Oh, and Rodney Wells as well. Did I do Christopher Strada with Alan? Okay. Um, Christopher Strada uh, is a dismissal if we didn't already tell you. He can go back as well. Miss on Veronica Sanders, clause number 23 DCCR 1114 and 1005, Mr. Rojas. Right, Ma'am, you're Veronica Sanders again, and um, we have already gone through, I've taken judicial notice of the court's files uh, with the finding that Ms. Sanders is competent. Mr. Rojas, will your client waive the formal reading of the indictment? She will. Ms. Sanders, in cause number, and we're going on count one only in that yes. one. Ms. Sanders, the uh, state has elected to proceed on count one only in cause number 23, DCCR 1114. You're charged with a second degree felony offense of assault on a peace officer or judge from July 18th of 2023. And how do you plead to that charge? Are you pleading guilty freely and voluntarily? 
And are you pleading guilty because you actually did what they charged you with? I have here on the computer some documents that have your signature on them that the state has marked as exhibit number one. Before you signed these, did you go over them with Mr. Rojas? Do you fully understand them? And do you understand if I follow the agreement that you've made with the district attorney that you'll be waiving or giving up any right to appeal? Do you also understand if you're not a U.S. citizen that a plea of guilty or no contest may result in your deportation, exclusion from admission to the country, or denial of naturalization under federal law? State tenders number one. No objection. All right, Ms. Sanders, I'm going to find uh, again that you entered your plea of um, Find that you're mentally competent. Find that you entered your plea freely and voluntarily. Find sufficient evidence at this time to find you guilty and find you guilty of the uh, second degree felony offense of assault on a peace officer. Sentence you in accordance with your agreement to a term of five years in the institutional division of the Texas Department of Corrections. You will receive credit on that sentence for any time that you've been in custody that the law gives you the right to receive. I will sign a dismissal as part of that agreement in clause number 23, DCCR 1005. I've handed you the trial court certification that shows that this was an agreement that I followed, and so you have waived any right to appeal. I've also handed you a written admonishment regarding your ineligibility to possess a firearm or ammunition. Because of the judgment entered against you, you're ineligible under Texas law to possess a firearm or ammunition. Possession of a firearm or ammunition could lead to charges against you. Firearm is a legal term and you should read that written admonishment. I provide you to see what devices qualify as a firearm. If you have questions about the laws that make you ineligible to possess a firearm or ammunition or about how long it lasts, you can talk to Mr. Rojas. All right, good luck to you, ma'am. You can go back with the bailiff. Thank you, Your Honor. Yes, sir. Thank you. Mr. Uh, Bruce Smith on Adrian Lakey, clause number 41568. <clears throat> yes. Adrian Lakey. Uh huh. Okay. Okay. You can hold Lakey. Mr. Wilkerson on Dijon Ivory, clause number 23, DCCR 0326 and 0327. Good morning, are you Dijon Ivory? And Mr. Ivory, in clause number 23, DCCR 0326, you're charged with the capital uh, felony of capital murder uh, from April 10th of 2023. And what that means in that case, because the state has filed a uh, notice that they're not seeking the death penalty, is that if you go to a trial and you're found guilty, it would be an automatic life sentence in prison without the possibility of parole. Do you understand what the possible consequences are if you're found guilty in that case? And then in clause number 23, DCCR 0327, you're charged with the first degree felony offensive murder from April 10th of 2023. If you're found guilty in that case, the range of punishments between five years and up to 99 years or life. Do you understand? And I have a plea bargain rejection that you've signed with Mr. Wilkerson that shows that the district attorney's office has made an offer if you wanted to enter a plea um, to enter a plea, I guess, to the lesser, of murder to the the lesser offense of murder in cause number 0326 with a 40 year sentence in the institutional division of the Texas Department of Corrections and a dismissal in that other, the, the regular murder on cause number 327. Do you understand? You have every right to reject that offer and have your cases both set for trial. I wanna make sure you understand what the possible consequences are if you go to trial, what your options are if you wanted to enter a plea. Do you understand all of that? Answer out loud. 
do you want to reject that offer and have your cases set for trial? I want to make sure you understand before we go forward. Also, Mr. Ivory, obviously, both the attorneys on these types of cases will have to do a lot of preparation to get ready for trial. After today, I'm not going to accept this plea agreement. So if you change your mind later, you're not going to have this option. It would be just, unless there's some new evidence that comes out that would make the attorneys change their positions, um, then you either, it's fine if you don't want to take it. If you're not guilty, that's what a jury's for. But I don't want you to think you can put this off and then come back and say, maybe I do want that 40 year deal because that's not going to be on the table. Do you understand? Okay. And you want to reject that and go to trial. Okay. We'll get that done. Um, it looks like there was a motion filed. This has been some time ago on a bond. Did I hear that? I mean, do you, I, it's, I'm uncertain. I mean, it's back from June. I don't know why we didn't or what was going on back then. Um, He's got, I believe, uh, one of the bonds is one million. Um, I believe that's the capital murder bond. Um, I mean, you got, it wasn't set for a bond hearing, but I'm just noticing in my file that there's, I had to see that there's orders that weren't signed on one back in June. Um, if y'all want me, if y'all want, just take a look at that. If there's, uh, if you want me to hear it, which I can do that as well. Looks like we filed one in uh, July and maybe one in June. In June. Yeah. Okay, let's let's do this. So the bonds are currently set. That way everything is clean in the file and there's not a motion at this point that hasn't been ruled on and cause and the capital murder case. Can you see what those bonds are? Let's see. They're both set in the millions, what I what it looks like to me. At least what they were initially set at back at magistration. So okay. I believe there was one that was no bond. So we filed a motion to set a bond and then a motion to reduce the bond. No, if it, okay. Anna, can you look, please? Okay, you got it. Okay, so it's a million on each. So there are bonds set on each um, case at a one million dollars in each case. Mr. Uh, Wilkerson, you may proceed. Uh, your Honor, Mr. Ivory uh, obviously has been declared indigent. He has no ability to raise the funds possible. Why don't we do this for purposes of this hearing? Mr. Ivory, raise your right hand the best you can. Do you swear from the testimony you're going to give in this hearing will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you God? All right. That way you can put on some evidence of his ability. Uh, Mr. Ivory, um, prior to your incarceration, were you an employee? Oh, Did you? Where we working? Okay. Um, was that side jobs uh, to earn cash? Is that moving company. moving company? Okay. And how long have you been locked up? Or do you remember the day you were arrested? Oh. You uh, are charged with murder and capital murder in these cases, correct? Oh, and do you have any funds on your commissary at present? Speak up. Uh, and do you have any property that you could sell uh, to raise money, like a vehicle, <laughs> anything of that nature? And uh, are you receiving any income at present from any source? Okay. Um, <clears throat> um, do you have family members that you could borrow money from? Yes, sir. Um, 
are those family members uh, people of great means, or would it be would it be well, listen to my question before, uh, or would it be difficult for them to raise, for instance, 10% uh, of a million dollar bond would be $100,000. Uh, is that something that you think that, that the family could put together, or do you think it would have to be um, more in the range of 10 to 20,000 that they might be able to raise? And uh, you know that based on your interactions with your family members? Yes, sir. Uh, and other than family, is there anyone that you would be able to borrow money from uh, in order to secure a bond? Okay. I'll pass the right. okay. All right. Mr. Smith, what is the state's position? Uh, based on the facts of the crime and uh, his prior felony conviction, the state would be opposed to uh, reduction of the bar. What is the criminal history? It's not in the indictment. He has uh, one state jail felony conviction uh, from 2015, burglary. Okay. Mr. Smith, all right, so at this time, I'm going to, um, based on the, obviously the nature of the offense, based on the factors set forth in 17.15 of the Code of Criminal Procedure uh, with regard to his ability to pay, but also the protection of the community and weighing all that, I'm going to deny the motions at this time. Uh, since the cases are being placed on the trial docket at this time, will, uh, if for some reason, um, it doesn't get reached at that trial setting, then I would uh, possibly consider um, having another hearing on that. I'm not saying I would grant it, but uh, at this point, I'm going to deny it. We'll get it set for trial. Um, obviously, uh, they're serious. I want it'll be, even though um, we're just putting it on the trial docket, let's see. Um, April 2023. Okay. All right. We'll, we'll see you back at trial docket then. Okay. Uh, let's see, Jimmy Russell, clause number 23, DCCR 0264, Ms. Holmes, which is the one that Ms. Zapata was on. Can we find that out and get it? Are you ready to announce on the one that Ms. Zapata is here for? Are y'all doing uh, Yes, we, there's an immigration issue. Okay. Um, and so we need to verify with his immigration state offer probation. Mm -hmm. But if he gets deported. So we just need to reset it? Yes. Okay. We just need Thank to you, Ms. Cepeda. You can send something in for your help today, but we're going to reset it. Okay. Um, and then you can get with uh, somebody on that. We'll do it next time. Thank you, Ms. Cepeda. So that's, uh, what's the name? Barrios. Barrios. It's reset. Good morning. Are you Jimmy Russell? Yes, and will your client waive the formal reading of the indictment? He will, Your Honor. <clears throat> Going on count one only? Yes, Mr. Russell, the state's elected to proceed on count one only. It alleges you committed the second degree felony offense of failure to comply with sex offender registration requirements from September 6th of 2022, and how do you plead to that charge? Mm -hmm. Are you pleading guilty freely and voluntarily? Yes, and are you pleading guilty because you actually did what they charged you with? Yes. I have here on the computer some documents that have your signature on them that the state has marked as exhibit number one. Before you signed these, did you go over them with Ms. Holmes? Yes. And do you fully understand them? Yes. And do you understand if I follow the agreement that you've made with the district attorney that you will be waiving or giving up any right to appeal? Do you also understand if you're not a U.S. citizen that a plea of guilty or no contest may result in your deportation, exclusion from admission to the country, or denial of naturalization under federal law? All right, I have to ask everyone. 
State tenors number one. No objection. It's admitted. Is there any evidence that um, Mr. Russell is not competent? No, Your Honor. All right, sir, I'm going to find that you entered your plea of guilty freely and voluntarily. Find that you're mentally competent and you understand the nature and the consequences of your plea. Find sufficient evidence to find you guilty and at this time find you guilty of uh, failure to register as a sex offender and uh, follow your agreement and sentence you to a term of three years in the Institutional Division of the Texas Department of Corrections. You will receive credit <clears throat> on that sentence for any time that you've been in custody that the law gives you the right to receive. I'm handing you the trial court certification that shows this was an agreement that I followed, and so you have waived your right to appeal. I've also handed you a written admonishment regarding your ineligibility to possess a firearm or ammunition. Because of the judgment entered against you, you're ineligible under Texas law to possess a firearm or ammunition. Possession of a firearm or ammunition could lead to charges against you. Firearm is a legal term, and you should read the written admonishment I provide you to see what devices qualify as a firearm. If you have questions about the laws that make you ineligible to possess a firearm or ammunition or about how long that lasts, you can talk to Ms. Holmes. All right, good luck to you, sir. You can go back with the bailiff. <clears throat> Uh, Robert White. Good morning. Are you Robert White? Yes, ma'am. And will your client waive the formal reading of the indictment? Yes, ma'am. Are we going on count one only? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Mr. White, in cause number 41504, um, the state's elected to proceed on count one only. It alleges you committed the third degree felony <laughs> offense of failure to comply with sex offender registration requirements from October 12th of 2022. And how do you plead to that charge? Mm -hmm. Not, not, guilty. not guilty okay so i have some paperwork here that you've signed that shows that you wanted to enter a plea of guilty for a plea agreement is that correct mm -hmm. okay so if you plead not guilty that means you're going to have a jury trial so do you want to have a jury trial and plead not guilty or do you want to plead guilty and guilty. go forward guilty. okay so are you pleading guilty freely and voluntarily and are you pleading guilty because you actually did what they charged you with I have here on the computer some documents that have your signature on them, but the state has marked as exhibit number one. Before you signed these, did you go over them with Ms. Holmes? Yes, do you fully understand them? Yes, and do you understand if I follow the agreement that you've made with the district attorney that you'll be waiving or giving up any right to appeal? And do you also understand if you're not a U.S. citizen that a plea of guilty or no contest may result in your deportation, exclusion from admission to the country, or denial of naturalization under federal law. State tenders number one. No it's admitted. Is there any evidence that Mr. White is not competent? No, Your Honor. All right, sir. I'm going to find that you entered your plea of guilty freely and voluntarily. Find that you're mentally competent and you understand the nature and the consequences of your plea. Find sufficient evidence to find you guilty and at this time find you guilty of failure to comply with sex offender registration requirements sentence you in accordance with your agreement to a term of three years in the Institutional Division of the Texas Department of Corrections. You will receive credit on that sentence for any time that you've been in custody that the law gives you the right to receive. I'm handing you uh, the trial court certification. That shows that this was an agreement that I followed, so you have waived your right to appeal. I've also handed you a written admonishment regarding your ineligibility to possess a firearm or ammunition. Because of the judgment entered against you, you are ineligible under Texas law to possess a firearm or ammunition. Possession of a firearm or ammunition could lead to charges against you. Firearm is a legal term, and you should read the written admonishment I provide you to see what devices qualify as a firearm. If you have questions about the laws that make you ineligible to possess a firearm or ammunition or about how long it lasts, you can talk to Ms. Holmes. All right, good luck to you, sir. You can go back with the bailiff. Uh, Adrian Lakey. Adrian Lakey. Thank you, ma'am. 
I called Joanna. She just she hadn't received, we didn't receive a notice it was set today, but it was it's a rejection. Oh, that one? I don't know. So we're fine. I mean, it was it was sent over October third. Yeah, it, it could very easily be. You know, our wonderful file. Yeah, it should have been a fax. Office. You get a fax and an email yeah. each time. All right. Um, are you Adrian Lakey? And Mr. Lakey, in cause number four one five six eight, you're charged with aggravated sexual assault of a child from December sixteenth of twenty twenty two. And what that means is that if you go to trial and you're found guilty, um, if you go to trial and you're found guilty, the minimum punishment would be twenty five years in prison, up to ninety nine years or life without the possibility of parole. Do you understand? And I'm making that, those notations also on the, uh, that plea bargain rejection that I've admonished him to. <clears throat> that correct punishment range. I have here before me a plea bargain rejection that has your signature on it with that of Mr. Smith that shows that the district attorney's office has made an offer if you wanted to enter a plea of guilty to reduce it to a what we call a regular aggravated sexual assault of a child for a 30 year term in the institutional division of the Texas Department of Corrections. You would have the uh, opportunity for parole with that agreement. You have every right to reject that offer and have your case set for trial. I want to make sure you understand what the possible consequences are if you go to trial, what your options are if you wanted to enter a plea of guilty, and do you understand all of that? Do you want to reject that offer and have your case set for trial? All right, I'll get that done. I want to make sure you understand, Mr. Lakey, that after today, I will not accept any plea agreements. Uh, or I won't accept this plea agreement. So if uh, you change your mind, it would be to something more than that, or it would just be open to the court. Do you understand? Okay. Then we'll get it set on the trial docket and everyone will begin preparation for trial. Thank you. Thank you. Thaddeus McRae, Mr. Smith. Clause number uh, 38958 and 38959. Good morning, sir. You're Thaddeus McRae. Yes, ma'am. And Mr. McRae's cases are set for trial to begin with jury selection. <coughs> Excuse me, November 27th. Looks like he's charged with the first degree felony offense of aggravated sexual assault, as well as the second degree um, felony offense of aggravated assault. And what is the announcement? Your Honor, we're still, so the statement I talked was still waiting on the, the DNA results. Read it. Okay. Um, well, it hadn't been sent off, and so we sent it off, and I thought we would have had it back by now, but it hasn't come back in yet. Is so it the agency that didn't send it off? It went to DP, exactly. It went to DPS, so it's, I mean, we've got, I've had Troy check on it, and I think we may have it soon but it hasn't come in yet obviously you would want that um yes, mr sir. smith so what i'm going to do um should i let me ask you that this i mean should we put this on back on a review docket i mean do you think that the results of that could potentially change the status of the case or no i don't anticipate that it would judge okay uh, i don't okay I don't then i'm just going to reset it to the next trial docket and if you will let the usually if it's set on a trial date if you can get with that agency usually they will kind of speed things along once it has a trial date let them know this is the second or third trial date and that we need it done if possible yes, all right thank you you can go back with the bailiff okay. paul blue Clause number 28547. Oh. 
Um, all right, so you're Paul Bull. Or, and it's Paul Thomas Bull. I just want to make sure uh, the record's clear since uh, we've got your father with the same name that's been in here. Uh, Mr. Bull was previously in court. Entered pleas of treat accounts one through five and a motion to revoke unadjudicated probation. And then the case was reset for sentencing. I got an updated report. Uh, since that time, a first amended motion to revoke unadjudicated probation has been filed. And we need to go through, um, it added uh, count six, which was the allegation of leaving the state, which I think is important. Um, so let's, let's do this first. Mr. Bull, best you can raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm the testimony you're going to give in this hearing will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God. Sure. All right, thank you. You can put your hand down. So we already went through the initial motion. What you're on probation for is stalking. You were placed on probation November 5th of 2018. And this first admitted motion alleges in count six that you also violated your probation by failing to remain in Jefferson County, Texas as ordered, and that you were in the state of Alabama on July 18th of 2023 without permission. Is that true or not true? So did you enter your plea of true to count six also freely and voluntarily? And uh, because it's actually true. All right. So I will find count six true as well as counts um, one through five in the previous uh, true. Um, has everyone had an opportunity to review the pre-sentence report? Yes, Your Honor. I have one. Are there any additions or corrections? Hang on, hang on. I'm let your attorney. I'm asking the attorneys right now. Um, unless my client has something to add, um, I've reviewed it with him. Okay, Ms. Malfino. Uh, other than just a very brief argument, judge, whatever. Right. So, is there something that's wrong in the rep in the report? No, I have a. I this is what I know. Obviously, I've made mistakes and read the letter, so I just really just want to make it clear about any type of intentions I've given in the letter. That 100, percent I'm not trying to manipulate you with the system, and I wasn't trying to. Being previously, you know, how I messed up with telling you how I knew about the wedding and all that stuff. I wasn't there to cause any problems. I don't know if they're asking that, but it's, I just want to be clear about it. I had no intentions of harming anybody because I know. Well, what were you going and, there for? I didn't know where I was going. I started off in West Texas, then went North, East Coast. Well, you didn't randomly. I don't, I don't you didn't. What, I'm just saying. All right. I don't believe that you randomly ended up in the same place. Any. He couldn't have gone to West Texas. From we had him on the license plate readers the whole time. Off and we were there, there's, Hold there's, on. Look. This stuff. Straight talking. to Alabama. Unfortunately for everyone involved, uh, the least of which was me and Miss Malfino, we were all up and concerned. Ex it, so concerned about what was going on when you cut that monitor off and you took off at a high rate of speed and went straight to Alabama. So you can just stop with whatever else you're talking about because it makes no difference because you are trying to manipulate and you are lying. So um, I don't really, I mean, I, I've dealt with this for as long as I've probably dealt with almost any case. Um, Y'all can make argument, but um, I, I know what I'm going to do. I mean, just, I mean I've, I've done I've done the monitor before successfully, and I'm under less stress now with doing more or less hours of work. Here's the thing, day. Mr. Bull. The only thing I wish today is right. that I had a higher range of punishment because I want for Claire to have some sense of peace for as long as possible. And unfortunately, I can only give her a short amount of that. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm, I'm going to hang on. Time. I'm going to find that you entered your pleas of true to counts one through six freely and voluntarily. Find those counts true. Find sufficient evidence at this time to find you guilty. And I find you guilty of the felony offense of stalking. Sentence you to a term of 10 years in the Institutional Division of the Texas Department of Corrections. Um, 
You will receive credit for any time that you've been in custody that the law gives you the right to receive. This is not an agreement. So you do have some rights to appeal. I need you to sign that with Ms. Holmes real quick and I will give you a copy of that admonishment telling you that you can appeal. You're also, y'all can go ahead and sign can it. I ask you a question? I, yeah. I, how would they know that I didn't I start going towards West Texas? It doesn't. There were license plate, there's license plate readers on the inner, Wait, Mr. Bull. Yeah. You, there's license plate, don't interrupt, okay? So all over the United States now, okay. there are things called license plate readers. They put in a license plate, and when something like this happens, they can start tracking. And that's exactly what happened. And that's how state of Alabama and the people there knew to be looking and try to find you. Okay. You don't need that. I, I need you to you hang on. To stop talking. I need you to uh, sign that document so that it just says that you're getting a copy of it and you, you have the right to appeal is all that says. If you'll sign it, please. Judge, you may, may I just ask, and I don't know if this is even an appropriate question. I know that um, what the nature of this offense, obviously, on behalf of the family, there will be significant objection to any parole being granted uh, without him discharging the entire sentence. But does this court have the authority to grant some kind of a no contact clause? Should he be paroled or should I? Reach out I think parole to has to do that. I think I lose jurisdiction over any of that. And so that would be something that parole, um, if he makes it. And I think they can also sign up to be notified um, of any type of parole hearing so that they could be present for that as well. So you're going to be handed again uh, the, the certification that shows you can appeal. I'm also handing you a written admonishment regarding your ineligibility to possess a firearm or ammunition. Because of the judgment entered against you, you are ineligible under Texas law to possess a firearm or ammunition. Possession of a firearm or ammunition could lead to charges against you. Firearm is a legal term, and you should read that written admonishment. I provide you to see what devices qualify as a firearm. If you have questions about the laws that make you ineligible to possess a firearm or ammunition or about how long it lasts, you can talk to your attorney, Ms. Holmes. Yes, Sharon, I just um, wanted to address the court uh, with speaking with his family. Um, they wanted me to ask in the event, whatever happens with him being sentenced, are there any um, tools as far as um, in TDC in regards to mental health? Sure. Uh, so what happened? His mental health issues. Yes. The short answer is yes. Okay. Um, the longer answer is typically when someone goes to TDC, they'll go first to the holiday unit, which is in Huntsville. They will be assessed for any type of issues. Um, that they may have and then hopefully it's their you know whatever issues they have they will be sent to the appropriate facility where they can get help but all of that Mr. Bull depends also on you so there are all kinds of programs and help that you can take advantage of while you're in TDC so that when you get out you don't have the types of breaks as you called it um, or whatever's going on with making these decisions that you've been making right so you have to take advantage no one can force you into programs there are programs but no one can force you into that i hope you take advantage of it so that you can get out live your life and not be back in front of any other judge all right you can go back with the bailiff no sir go with the bailiff i'm past done Clause number 23 DCCR 0987 on Wesley Antoine. Just do note that this PSI is contact completed. That might help you in understanding my offer. Okay. It could, yeah, because there was a. He's going to clarify the statement. Okay.
right over there. <laughs> How about you? Good morning. Are you Wesley Antoine? And Mr. Antoine was previously in court, entered a plea of guilty to um, aggravated assault uh, with a deadly weapon. Um, and I've received a copy of the pre-sentence report. Has everyone had an opportunity to review the report? Yes, Your Honor. Any additions or corrections? Uh, yes, from the defense, I've reviewed the report with Mr. Antoine, and he um, would like to take responsibility um, for his action in this and is asking that the court um, sentence him to the probation. Okay. So, Mr. Antoine, when you were here before, you said you pled guilty because you actually did it, but then the pre-sentence report says you said you didn't. But it's important if you enter a plea of guilty that if you if you did it, great, let's do this plea. If you didn't, then we need to talk about it. I do. Okay. Any other, uh, Ms. Malfina, the state, uh, based on your information, you said uh, is wanting to go forward with the plea as well? Yes, Judge, if you would also consider, obviously, adding a new contact order to mental health cases uh, and any of part time, whether that's now or in the bench. Okay. Based Great. on the previous so, Mr. Antoine, I'm going to find that you previously entered your plea of guilty freely and voluntarily. Find um, sufficient evidence to find you guilty, and at this time, find you guilty of aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. Sentence you in accordance. Can't wait. Can I do a straight probation on the ag assault with a deadly weapon? Is that one that's weird? Anybody? Know? Everybody's looking around. You know, I don't know. There's, there's. Hold on, because there's. Which ones? There's some that I can and can't, and I'm trying to remember for some reason a deadly weapon. Hold on, let's just make sure. I don't know why that's. <laughs> okay, so that's. So you can't on, I mean, there's a whole list of them. Aggravated robbery, you can't. Burglary, certain things. A felony. When it is shown that the defendant used or exhibited a deadly weapon. Uh, during the commission of the offense or during immediate flight therefrom. So it's the deadly weapon. Right. And it's pled as that. So it either needs to be a deferred or it needs to be a plea to something else without the deadly weapon. And I'd like to keep the deadly weapon. So if we could discuss maybe changing the yeah. Of the 10 deferred. Yeah. Why don't y'all, y'all want to talk about it just for a minute? I mean, I'm okay with that based on the nature of the plea. So what would happen, what we're talking about, Mr. Antoine, is you are not eligible for what we call a straight probation. So I can't give you a, certain number of years and then find you guilty and sentence you to probation because of the nature of the allegation has a deadly weapon. You can still get probation, but it has to be a deferred probation, which means you don't have this conviction, which kind of sounds good in the beginning, but the, the end of it is if you violate any condition of probation, that five-year sentence is gone. I would have the entire range of punishment, which is a minimum of five years, up to the rest of your life. I would do, I would do well with probation. Okay. I mean, I, I just want to make sure you understand the difference in a deferred probation is mm -hmm. that if you violate it, I have that entire range of punishment. This five-year thing that you've agreed to would be gone. Do you I understand? understand? That's okay. Okay. That's so um, what I'm going to do then, do I need a new... Or just change it. Just change it. So what I'm going to do then, based on everybody's representation and find that this is an agreement still, <coughs> is find that you entered your plea of guilty freely and voluntarily. Find sufficient evidence to find you guilty. However, I'm going to defer all proceedings and place you on probation for a period of 10 years. 
Was there a fine? No, no. Uh, there's not go going to be a fine, but you are required to follow all of the rules and conditions of probation. And that includes, uh, you will be on a specialized mental health caseload. That's to help you, right? So if there's treatment, if there's doctor's appointments, if there's medication that they feel like you need, you are required now under court order to do those things. That's so that you can, and, 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 and if you can admit that you do, you know that you need to follow through with all that. That's now part of your probation. Um, you're going to be required to take um, either an anger management or a battery intervention program and have absolutely no contact, no communication with Shannon Red. Do you understand? Okay. I understand. That means in person, obviously, but it also means you can't send messages. You can't get on social media like Facebook or Snapchat or Instagram or any others that might exist that I don't know about. Send messages, no contact, no communication. Even if she says, hey, it's OK, let's get back together. I have to say it's OK. okay. She can't give you permission to violate this court order today. Do you understand? understand? All right. So if you do all of that, this really is a great opportunity. You'll be able to success, be on probation, be successful at the end of the probation period. If you successfully complete it, the case is dismissed, right? right. right. The other side of that, like I said earlier, is if you violate any condition, mm -hmm. you can be brought back into court and you could be looking at a number one, being found guilty and number two, going to prison for the rest of your life. I'm okay. I'm handing you the trial court certification that shows this is an agreement that I followed. So you have waived your right to appeal. I have also handed you a written admonishment. Well, actually, I can take that one back. But I am going to order, even though. You already have a con felony conviction, right? Okay. So, you know, you can't have a firearm. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, you can, um, the probation will talk to you before you leave today. Good luck to you, sir. Cause number uh, 23 DCCR 0134 on David Garcia. there sir and sir are you david garcia yes, and will your client waive the formal reading of the indictment he will, your mr garcia in clause number 23 dccr 0134 the state has elected to proceed on the lesser included uh, state jail felony offense of attempted failure to register as a sex offender from uh, January 30th of 2023. And how do you plead to that charge? Mm -hmm. Are you pleading guilty freely and voluntarily? Yes, and are you pleading guilty because you actually did what they've charged you with? Yes, I have here on the computer some documents that have your signature on them that the state has marked as exhibit number one. Before you signed these, did you go over them with Ms. Holmes? Yes, do you fully understand them? Yes, and do you understand if I follow the agreement that you've made with the district attorney that you will be waiving or giving up any right to appeal? Yes, do you also understand if you're not a U.S. citizen that a plea of guilty or no contest may result in your deportation, exclusion from admission to the country, or denial of naturalization under federal law? Yes, State tenders number one. No it's admitted. Is there any evidence that Mr. Garcia is not competent? Yeah. All right, sir, I'm going to find that you entered your plea of guilty freely and voluntarily. Find that you're mentally competent and you understand the nature and the consequences of your plea. Find sufficient evidence to find you guilty. And at this time, find you guilty of the state jail felony offense of attempted failure to register as a sex offender. Sentence you in accordance with your agreement to a term of 180 days in the um, state jail prison. You will receive credit on that sentence for any time that you've been in custody that the law gives you the right to receive. I'm handing you the trial court certification that shows this was an agreement that um, I followed. And so you've waived your right to appeal. I'm also handing you a written admonishment regarding your ineligibility to possess a firearm or ammunition. Because of the judgment entered against you, you're ineligible under Texas law to possess a firearm or ammunition. 
possession of a firearm or ammunition could lead to charges against you. Firearm is a legal term and you should read that written admonishment. I provide you to see what devices qualify as a firearm. If you have questions about the laws that make you ineligible to possess a firearm or ammunition or about how long it lasts, you can talk to Ms. Holmes. All right, good mm -hmm. luck to you, sir. Thank mm -hmm. you. All right, patient show pain. Okay, perfect. That'll clean it up a little bit. I said it right. Yeah. Like, it's hard for me. It just doesn't. It doesn't. I just read it and it sounds like. Yes, yeah, it took me a while. Good morning. Are you patient? Chopin. And will your client waive the formal reading of the motion? Julia. Ms. Chopin, I have before me a motion to revoke your unadjudicated probation. Shows that you were placed on probation September 7th of 2021 for the offense of engaging in organized criminal activity. And that was a five-year deferred probation. Is that correct? It alleges that you violated your probation. Uh, count one alleges that you failed to report as directed for the months of July and August of 2023. And is that true or not true? Count two alleges that you failed to provide verification of performing the community service hours as required. Is that true or not true? Um, we would abandon the remaining uh, additional uh, allegations or counts. So my understanding is the agreement is to um, find her guilty, but then... Uh, place her on a probation on a straight probation, a convicted probation. Is there a number of years that you guys have agreed to that? Or um, well, she's on five for I believe it would be two over five. Yes. Um, also, part of our uh, agreement was to uh, allow, allow the time she spent in jail so far to serve as a sanction. Right. I guess what's the, I need to know the underlying agreement though with regard to how long in the state jail probated for how long. At least my intention, Judge, was for the remainder of what she would have been on for um, the, the term for the probation. For the probation. But how long in state jail prison? I mean, it, it typically it's a two year sentence. I mean, but that's okay. Two, two would be two over three. She has three, she should have three years remaining mm -hmm. on her. Um, so two year sentence probated for three I'm years. Okay. I'm okay with that. That's everyone's agreement. With your permission, I'm going to write that on the agreed punishment recommendation. Yes, sir. Okay. So, what was it? Uh, state abandoned three and four. Did you enter your pleas of true to counts one and two freely and voluntarily? And because they're actually true. So I have some paperwork here on the computer that has your signature on it that the state has marked as exhibit number one. Before you signed this, did you go over it with Ms. Holmes? And do you fully understand it? And I want to make sure you understand because I have made a modification on this paperwork after you signed it, that you understand what it sounds like you all are agreeing to is that I would find you guilty of the offense. I would sentence you to two years in the state jail prison, but I'm going to probate that, which means you'll be on probation for three years. You'll be required to still follow all of the rules and conditions of probation. Uh, there will be a 30 day jail sanction, but you'll get credit for the time you've been in jail this time on that. Is that all of your understanding? And do you agree with that and want me to follow that uh, recommendation? Um, state tenders number one. No it's admitted any evidence that Ms. Chopin's not competent. No, you're not. All right, ma'am, I'm going to find that you entered your pleas of true to counts one and two freely and voluntarily. Find those counts true, find sufficient evidence to find you guilty, and at this time, find you guilty of engaging in organized criminal activity. I'm going to sentence you into, with your agreement to a term of two years in the state jail prison, but I'm going to probate that. You'll be on probation for three years. Any fines and fees that you were owing on the deferred probation, I want transferred to the straight probation. 
Uh, so those don't go away. You still have to pay all of those uh, community service that you hadn't done. All of that gets transferred to this case. Do you understand? Um, what this means now is that for all practical purposes, your case here in court is over. That two-year sentence that you just agreed to, you will be able to serve out while you're on probation for three years. But now the other side of that is that you've agreed to a two-year term. And so if you come back and you violate your probation again, you could be facing that two-year sentence. Do you understand? I've handed you the trial court certification that shows this was an agreement that I followed. And so you have waived your right to appeal and I've also handed you a written admonishment regarding your ineligibility to possess a firearm or ammunition. Because of the judgment entered against you, you're ineligible under Texas law to possess a firearm or ammunition. Possession of a firearm or ammunition could lead to charges against you. Firearm is a legal term, and you should read the written admonishment I provide you to see what devices qualify as a, a firearm. If you have questions about the laws that make you ineligible to possess a firearm or ammunition or about how long it lasts, you can talk to Ms. Holmes. All right? Good luck to you, ma'am. Thank you. Okay, so I changed this to a deferred. Thank you. All right, is that it? Yes.